So um, here we are once again, ready to get started on a new lesson. Tonight, we are going to be working on lesson number 11. Basically, we are a few steps away from the end. And yeah, it feels like, you know, the end of this module is coming. Um, so far, it has been a great experience. It has been enjoyable. And uh, for tonight, I told you that, you know, if there was any chance of like having questions or any doubts that you may have, well, we can try to go ahead and clarify all those questions um, this evening. So that's, of course, going to be um, in a little bit. Maybe right now we can focus on well, the activities for this evening. Last night, I told you that we were going to be talking about gestures and uh, and feelings. Then we also um, have pending a uh, conversation that we are going to be practicing tonight as well. And right after that, we're going to be talking about models, different models and different um, levels of obligation that you have depending on what model you're going to use. So that's going to be... Uh, like the main outlet for tonight's um, class, we are going to try to um, follow, you know, the um, the time and try to work under, well, the time period that, ha that we have uh, been assigned. So um, as per usual, there is, of course, a question at the beginning of the, of the lesson. And tonight, I am going to ask you something relatively simple. It's not that hard. You know, it's not complicated at all. But it has to do a little bit with, um, well, with you, not a little bit. It actually is about you. So, yeah, it's simply, as always, you know, it's part of the process. Um, when we are learning, um, acquiring as mass vocabulary is, of course, uh, one of the most important steps. So um, learning new words, learning new phrases day by day is what um, you know, we should be doing as, as um, future bilinguals, trying to learn as many words as possible, trying to figure out how to say as many things as possible should be the best um, idea to follow up. Now, for this evening, it's not gonna be uh, that hard. You know, it's not gonna be complicated at all, um, honestly, but we are going to have to, um, to try our best and go ahead and learn or sorry, and share what are our favorite colors. So that's going to be the question for this evening. Now, I don't only only want you to simply reply, you know, with the color. I would like to hear an explanation, like why is it that this is your favorite color? So let's get started. Let's get to hear maybe from Ever first. So Ever, in your case, what is your favorite color, and why is it that that's your favorite color? Favorite colors. Yes, your favorite color. And why is it black that? And, black and blue. Oh, cool. Why? Why will that be? Ever? Why? Because black is. Yes, ever. Well, um, how about then if we hear from Rodrigo Hernandez? In your case, Rodrigo Hernandez, what are um, or what is your favorite color and why? Uh, my favorite color is uh, orange uh, because I like the sign of the color. Oh, okay. That's cool. You know, that's great. So, yeah, orange. It's uh, one of those colors that, you know, it feels peaceful uh, to some extent, maybe depending on the environment or the moment when you see it. Because for example, if you see it like on a sunset or 
um on a on a sunrise you know it's gonna feel like one of those peaceful moments that we can get to live so yeah it's it's a great color to have as a favorite now how about in the case of uh, raul raul ramirez in your case raul what is your favorite color and why okay my favorite color is green because uh I consider that the color, the green color is peaceful for me. And for example, in in United States or in other in other country that is that is um is I am the I am um the um, a lot of uh, forests, for example, I like to see the color green in the in the trees, because uh, I like to I I like the mount, and I consider that uh, when I see the mount with a lot of trees, specifically the color green uh, for me is is painful, and I like to the I, I like to the forest and. And I consider that the color green is is my is um is a special color for me. Okay, great, yeah. Um, and uh, the fact that you mentioned that you know green is basically all over the place, and uh, you can see it in many like um environments. And of course, it's the main color that we have for our environment by itself. So yeah, it's a. I could completely agree with the fact that you know it's a, uh, one of those colors that is very peaceful it brings you a lot of peace it makes you feel at ease um something else that they say that the color green has is that it can also give you a little bit of energy it can make you feel energized when you perceive this color um but yeah it, it's you know great and of course very very enjoyable all right how about if we hear from edwin in your case edwin what is your favorite color and why uh, hi everybody. Um, bueno, my favorite color is is red. Uh, but in car, my favorite color is black. Hmm. Um, actually, my color of of my car is is gray. But I want to change uh, uh, a black. Okay. Uh, um. For me, uh, the color red uh, represent uh, happiness. Great, very good. It's one of the most, oh, yes. Because it's my favorite. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, it's one of the, you know, most vivid colors in the whole palette. Like, you know, when you see colors, red is one that calls your attention like very easily. And many people say that it's also a representation of life because, well, we as humans or basically many of the animals that exist in the animal kingdom as well have uh, blood and their blood is red. So they say that, you know, because the blood is red, it can also represent um, life. Um, so, yeah, it seems like, you know, it's a really vivid color. It's very happy. And uh, now just an advice. If you have your car, you say that your car is, is great, right? So if you want to change it uh, for black, I will not be against it because I like cars when they are black. I just have to tell you that it's harder to maintain the paint. Like black paint is harder to keep like um, safe or looking great for a longer period. Gray cars are easier. For example, in my house, we have uh, one car that is white, one that is um, gray, and one that is black. So the black is the one that we have to wash almost all the time. Like if there is no week that we don't have to wash it if we want it um, to look good. And also the paint gets gets damaged more easily. And it's like more obvious when there's like little scratches or anything. Um, when it comes to the gray or the white paint, it's not that complicated. So, you know, it's, it's not that hard. But yeah, black is going to require more uh, dedication if you want to keep it like neat uh, for a longer period gonna need some extra dedication but still black cars they look amazing so if you want to do it go for it all right how about in the case of you rodrigo uh, mendoza what would happen to be your favorite color and why uh, good evening teacher in my evening. case uh, i have two favorite colors 
uh, one is blue mm -hmm. uh, because it's associated uh, with the ocean is blue, the sky is blue, and the other color is white uh, because combined uh, with uh, all type of clothes, for example, uh, when I go at other uh, place, I decide use shirt uh, white, for example, yeah. <laughs> and it's very easy uh, cloth with uh, with uh, white. Yeah, it's it, that's something I read actually earlier today when I was like you know trying to see or get some ideas for some of the colors. Um, white is actually one of the colors, or basically the only color that can um, be easily combined with any other color. Like it combines with everything. So you can put white basically with everything. It is not going to look bad because yeah, white is the absence of, of any other color. So of course, you know, it's going to be, or it's going to look great. And uh, something that I do know about blue as well is that they use it um, in public transportation. I don't know if you guys have ever been on like uh, buses Buses with the original colors, not buses as they like, you know, when they tune them up and everything, when they like do or add LED um, lighting or everything, that's like a different thing. But when we are talking about buses, like international buses um, with the original color or the, the original lighting, airplanes as well, they are supposed to have a blue tinted light because blue is supposed to be um a representation of calm or tranquility so it allows or helps people to stay more like at ease or feel better when they are um boarding a plane or an uh, uh or a bus because um uh, many people of course they have difficulty going to um, or falling asleep um in these situations because of course they are scared um but blue is supposed to help with that and if you had, for example, green lights, they will be too active. Like the, the green color is too bright and it kind of like calls to action. Uh, I don't know if you have noticed, but many um, companies that have like an, a motto that is supposed to like inspire people to move or like do workout or something, those companies normally have like a green uh, a tendency to use green among their colors. Um, but when we're talking about... Uh, Red, for example, people who like red, someone may say, why are not lights on airplanes red? Because red is, as I said earlier, something that also calls uh, to action. And in that instance, when you're talking about um, an airplane, you're supposed to feel calm, not active. And red is more vivid. It kind of like um, feels dangerous to some extent as well. So blue is supposed to be used on airplanes just to keep you at ease. So if you guys have uh, never paid attention to that, next time you are on an airplane or a bus that has, of course, its original colors, um, try to pay attention to that. And you will see that many, many airplanes or buses nowadays, they actually have a blue tinted light. Of course, there are going to be some that are simply white or, or, or like yellow lighting. Those are maybe um, just because well, the make just didn't think of that, or maybe they didn't get the photo on time, or it's probably something that happened before uh, that idea came up. So yeah, but still, it's you know a nice detail about the blue color. It's something that can give you a lot of tranquility. Now, if I am allowed to share, in my case, I think that you guys have noticed that I do wear a lot of blue, but blue is not even close from being my favorite color. It's simply that I have a lot of blue shirts uh, but my favorite color is actually a color named burgundy. It's similar to a maroon. Uh, you know, it's very similar to maroon, but it's a bit different. It's like the wine color that people know in Spanish, see, como color vino. Basically, that's the one. That's my favorite color. I like it because it. back in the day, you know, back when there were still like more importance on um, kingdoms and, and all that, like the royalty, it used to be one of the colors that they were, and it used to represent, you know, a lot of the values that were supposed to be um, within the, the royal family, like, um, you know, prosperity, uh, dedication, responsibility, all those things are supposed to be 
um, stored in that color. Like you, you show those things when you wear that color. The same basically goes to the color purple. When you wear purple, it's something that represents elegance and it's supposed to um, represent um, like a higher stance on society. Because back in the day when those people were still ruling, like when there were a lot of like kingdoms and all that, um, they were supposed to to be like very hard to produce. That color, the color purple, was supposed to be very, very hard to produce because they got it out of a uh, shell, I think. So it was very difficult to harvest the shell and even more difficult to harvest the tint to create purple. So basically only royalty was the one who will wear purple. So nowadays, that's why this color, burgundy and purple, are both representatives of um, royalty and elegance. Now, Let's see, uh, how about in your case, Karen, what is your favorite color and why? Uh, hello, I don't think that I have a favorite color. Actually, I like almost all the colors, but what I know is I don't like yellow. I don't like red. And um, let me see, and then, um, it's like blue light. No, definitely no. They are not my favorite. But the rest, yes, I can, I can handle. Accept. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, yellow is a tricky one because it's very bright. Like everything that is yeah, yellow it, is a little bit too bright. I don't understand the people that have a yellow cars. Um. Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. thought I thought that no 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 I said earlier I have a white one a gray one and a black one so no 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 white here uh no I was thinking exactly the same today like around 3 p.m I went to a funeral and you know the funeral was taking too long so I decided to go for a walk and while I was walking I saw a car and I was like okay who comes in a taxi to a funeral and mm -hmm. as I approached the car I was like it's not a taxi so like yeah the heck like I don't know. I don't. I don't understand it either. I don't see why people will have you know like yellow cars. I know that that's something that happens here in El Salvador, and like there are not like many countries that have the same color. But still, I don't understand it because I feel like they are too bright, too like out there. So yeah, yeah. it's it's a weird. I thing. like like a gray or like I don't know how we say plateado, but silver. Yeah. I love the cars in that color, but I never had the opportunity to have a car in that color. I just have red that I, mm -hmm. I well, it's, it was like wine. Um, yeah. Like burgundy. I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't like it. And now, uh, and now white. It's fine, but it's it's hard. The white uh, white cars is is hard they to get keep dirty. Clean. Yeah, you're yeah. not even you're not even out of the car wash when they're dirty already. So yeah, mm -hmm. black and white cars are hard because of that. That's why I always I always go for gray because I feel like gray is better. You know, like it it can be dirty yeah. but it's not that noticeable. You know, and, and silver as you said, so it's not that noticeable. You can like you know go for longer without going to the car wash or like cleaning it yourself. So yeah, yeah. but still yeah. things that happen. So yeah, yeah, okay. It happens. <laughs> yeah, so great. And uh, you know, as we said yesterday, like colors are for people to choose. And uh, even if we don't understand why people choose yellow cars, there are still going to be people who do that. Because as I said, you know, I was surprised. I actually thought that it was a taxi, but it wasn't. Um, how about Jonathan? In your case, Jonathan, what is your favorite color and why? Hi, good evening. evening. Actually, my favorite color is the turquoise. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I, yeah, yellow. Think... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, the turquoise, because it's the color of the little lake to the Ilomactepec volcano uh -huh. and the Cuatepec Lake in some lake? seasons of the years when I climb the, the, this volcano. It's really amazing, the landscape. I love the uh, place photos and videos and it's so similar so when i was a child my favorite color was green mm -hmm. 
because some reasons when i watched uh, uh, star wars i really love the lightsaber of the Green. master yoda and uh -huh. the luke skywalker the effect mm -hmm. at the that green at the darkness and about and also the story of the emerald sword in the lord of the rings the shine of this color for me it's it's wonderful mm -hmm. great and i want to be the green ranger in, in the Power <laughs> Rangers. I, i'm not was want to be a, a red ranger i i, I like the, the green ranger the green ranger when i was a child Okay, great. Yeah. Um. So yeah, green. As uh, I mean, in my case, it used to be my favorite color. Like a few years back, it was my favorite color. Now, um, before I remember the one time I asked a similar question, I didn't ask why it was your favorite color. I asked basically like, how did you discover that this was turning into your favorite color? And uh, in my case, for if I was you know to answer that question. I started to like burgundy because a pair of shoes that I had. Since I got that pair of shoes, I started getting as many shoes as I could in burgundy. And then I got, I think, up to 10 shirts that were burgundy. Now all of those shirts are ruined. I don't have any burgundy, uh, you know, outwear to, to wear. I only have blue. And this is actually, I think it will be like my third favorite, like navy blue. I have a lot of navy blue things, like tons of navy blue shirts. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's simply not my favorite. It simply just doesn't do it, but it's still, you know, it's there. So yeah. Now, how about Blanca? I have, I think I haven't, I haven't asked you a question just yet. So Blanca, in your case, uh, what will happen to be your favorite color and why? My favorite color is color blue because I like it. see the sky. <laughs> All right, great. Yeah, that's nice. So yeah, as I said earlier, you know, we have um, the blue on many things. We can see it on, on many things around us. It's basically more abundant than green, I would say, because I think that there is more sky space and more sea space than plants on Earth. Uh, and, uh, you know, all of those are tinted blue. And as I said previously, blue is also a color that represents um, tranquility, peace, and, uh, um, you know, it can make you feel more at ease than other colors. Now, here we have feelings and gestures. So now we're going to be learning a little bit about how to refer to some of the things that people do that we can identify as probably not agreeing with something that we are doing or we are saying. So feelings and gestures. The first thing is, what is the man doing in each picture? Match the expressions with the pictures, then compare with a partner. Now, we're going to start by getting to see some of the feelings, not the gestures. Okay, We're going to see some of the feelings first. Um, so the feelings that we can express, or most of the time express, are annoyment, boredom, confusion, disgust, uh, yeah, disgust embarrassment, exhaustment, frustration, impatience, irritation, and nervousness. Now, if we use them as adjectives, because that's like the, the, the most common way we, in which we're going to use these words, we should have to say something like annoyed, bored, confused, disgust, um, embarrassed, exhausted, frustrated, impatient, irritated, and nervous. Remember, most of these are in um, in the past. We have already talked about it. We have already discussed that. And we use them, even though, um, you know, they can be used as verb. Many of these can be used as, as verbs. Uh, we use them as adjectives because we're trying to describe a feeling or, you know, a way in which we are, um, like, like, understanding something. So remember that. Feelings, That's, those are the verbs that we can use as adjectives. Most of the time, these are the only ones that we can use as adjectives. The rest of the verbs are actions, like are mere actions. But these are actions, yes, that represent a feeling. Now, um, we have some other actions that we are going to understand as gestures. 
gestures. I think that we all have, you know, some specific gesture that uh, we practice depending on how we are feeling at a specific moment. Before I get to um to talk about that, I want to hear from you. Look, like, for example, when you are impatient, what do you do? What is the first thing that you feel like you start doing when you're impatient? Let's hear maybe, uh, so let's, let's put it in an example. Like if you are in a long line at the bank, okay? I know that many people don't go to the bank anymore. I don't, like I, I rarely go to the bank because I most of the things that I do, I do it online. But if you go to the bank and you have to wait for, I don't know, 60 people to go before it's your turn. What is the first thing that you notice that you start doing that shows your impatience in this line? Let's hear from uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo Mendoza. What is something that you recognize in yourself as a show or a gesture of impatience? Uh, for example, teacher, when I hope a uh, result of the exam in university, for example, mm -hmm. and I, I am a patient. But what do you do? Like, what is something, a gesture that you do, that you remember that you do? Okay, I will give uh, you my example. In my case, like when I'm waiting for something, this is something that I start doing. Okay. Like, this is me. Whenever I'm waiting for something, I'm, I'm like waiting. At, uh, when I'm sitting mostly, I will go like this, like. I'm bored. I want to go. I want this to be over. I don't want to wait anymore. So this is me. This is basically what I do whenever I'm waiting for something. So in your case, uh, what would it be? Uh, for example, move my 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 leg or touch a pencil. So tapping and... your leg. Yes, it's oh. usually. <laughs> okay, great. Nice. Um, how about in the case of uh, Raul? In your case, Raul, what will be a gesture of impatience that you have? Something that you do when you feel like, you know, you just want to be out of some place. Mm. I don't know, coach. I don't, <laughs> I don't know, coach. Okay, that's fine. So you don't remember anything. Great. Um, Edwin, in your case, Edwin, what would be something that you do that shows your impatience? Um, I don't know. 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 Very easy and and uh, and for example um in a bank uh -huh. eh, eh, esperar mucho no sé cómo se sería eh, that is basically eh, eh, that is my case case and despair. Okay, so you simply you, you just get desperate. So when you have to wait too long, as you diría, esperar mucho, see, wait too long, um, simplemente wait too long, uh -huh, wait too long, uh, you simply get desperate. So no hay nada como un gesto específico que usted recuerde. Bueno, por ejemplo, otra cosa que yo hago cuando es en el banco y estoy parado, los bancos siempre tienen esos divisores, ¿verdad? Y me pongo a través yes. esas cosas. Ah, uh, me Ajá, es como que a destrabarlo, lo dejo que se lo lleve el hilo, lo regreso, lo trago y así. Yeah. O sea, pues es como que ah, nunca se mueve. So, yeah, <laughs> mostly, of course, It's... when banks don't yeah. allow you to, to use your phone because there are banks that allow you to use your phone so you can easily distract yourself on your phone. But yeah, there are banks that do not allow that. So, yeah. That is my case. It's Okay, cool. Yeah, that's, you know, that's also something I was forgetting about that. The thing is that most of the banks that I go to nowadays, they simply have like seats. They don't have a, um, <coughs> they don't have the, those things anymore. Um, uh, but yeah, there's a Cuscatlan in Musulutan where I uh used to go, uh, when I was working for a call center, and I remember that I I I used to play with those things, you know. Uh, but now it's like yeah, I don't I don't go there anymore, so I don't see those things that often. Um, how about in your case, um. Karen, what do you do when you get, um, you know, stressed or bored in a in a situation like this? 
Um, well, first, I think that I start, uh, start watching my cell phone, probably TikToks or reading some Google articles. Mm -hmm. And uh, then if I get tired, I start to see everywhere with my face, like, like an angry face. Try and then I everything. start to complain, mm -hmm. to talk with the people that is near of me. And I start to complain, asking what happened. <laughs> so probably I'm an annoying customer. Yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> la, señor, la típica señora que llega allá brava. Yes, yes <laughs> of course. Yes. Okay, so <laughs> no la dejen entrar al banco. Okay, <laughs> so cool. Yeah, I mean... I have faced people like that as well. I almost never do it because I feel like it's weird. Like, for example, um, there was one class a long time ago. It was about uh, public transportation. What do you do when you sit next to someone? Like, if, for example, you're going on a long trip, let's say that you guys are coming here to, like, um, San Miguel, so and, and you're coming, you know, on the bus. What do you do? In, in my case, what I do is simply, I just try to do something. So when I have to travel that far, uh, if I'm alone, of course, I try to bring a book or something, you know, a book, a magazine, something that I haven't, I haven't read. Um, because my phone, I don't do it. I don't use my phone that much when I'm on long trips and mostly when I go like on the bus, because I have had many bad experiences traveling by bus when my phone runs out of battery. And I'm, I'm trying to contact my family and I just can't because, well, I have some power banks, but I, I always forget them. Um, so, yeah, I prefer to like not use my phone, try to have a book, try to have something that I can do. Um, and yeah, now that's something that doesn't happen too often. It hasn't happened in a long time because, well, lately, most of the trips that I have had have been in car or I have gone with my girlfriend, so I don't need to like, you know, use, uh, okay, understood, Jonathan, no problem. So I don't have to like, you know, get distracted, but I feel like when you are next to someone that you don't know and you start a conversation, it's kind of hard. Like, what do you start the conversation with? The, the cliche topic is of course the weather. Like that's the most basic thing, you know? Talking about the weather, like, oh, did you see the rain last night? Like, yeah, that was tough. That, that's something. Uh, but I am bad at starting conversations. I am way better at, like, interrupting conversations, like, getting mid-conversation and get, like, dive into it and start talking about the thing that people are talking already. But, like, that's probably why I never had a girlfriend before my girlfriend now, because I was very, very bad at, like, you know, starting to talk to people. Um, I just don't feel comfortable doing that. Like the first time I have to talk to strangers in, of course, a face-to-face -face situation. Um, with students, it's different. Like I feel way more at ease with students, but with like everyday people that I see on the street, it's like very hard. I mean, like saying hi, that's great, but starting a conversation, I'm not good at that. So I just prefer to avoid those things. And when I go to those places, you know, that I have to wait, um, maybe what I will do is I'll let, if someone starts talking to me, of course, I'll reply, but I am not good at being the first one, like having the first interaction. But anyway, um, that's why I try to like distract myself, you know, with other things. Now, um, here we have some of the gestures now. So biting his nails, that's something that we do most of the time when we are nervous, you know, biting your nails is doing this. So yeah, biting your nails. And I think that you can actually see the letters here. Somebody filled this book, this book before. And we can actually see that biting his nails is letter D. So yeah, we, we have it here. Biting his nails. That's something we do most of the time when we are nervous. We have another one. Rolling his eyes. He's rolling his eyes. This is letter Z. So rolling his eyes means, you know, going like a... Like you're disgusted at something, that you are um, frustrated at something, or that you're simply annoyed at something. So yeah, when you're annoyed most of the time, like, uh, come on. So yeah, rolling his eyes. I have discovered that I do it a lot. I remember that I used to tell my sister not to do it, but then I ended up copying the costume from her. So yeah, 
rolling your eyes. It's something you do when you feel, you know, annoyed or frustrated um, by something. Now, the scratching his head. This is something that I would do when I'm in probably uh, like in a boring situation or when you're confused, you know, the scratching your head. I don't know who else has the practice. In my case, I do tend to do it. I tend to scratch my hair quite often. Um, so yeah, something that is very similar and it also happens in situations like that is uh, fixing your hair. You know, when you're touching your hair a lot, uh, that's basically something that it's supposed to happen when we are um, like impatient or bored in some specific situations. Then the next one, tapping his foot. Tapping his foot. This is the one that I told um I told Rodrigo about. Yeah, tapping your foot. So it's basically like you know doing noises with your with your foot, like um stepping on the floor repeatedly, like a, like like box bunny used to do. So basically that's tapping your foot. So yeah, um and of course this will relate a lot with being bored or uh impatient. So bored or impatient are going to be very very common or this is going to be a very common gesture when you're bored or impatient then we have um twirling his hair when you're twirling your hair this is very tough for most men you know twirling your hair and now this is something that you do when you feel embarrassed or when you're confused you know like mm, what should i do next like what am i doing here you know so you're twirling your hair see twirling your hair all right, and the next is real, um, wirkling his noise. He's wirkling his noise. So when you do the work, the workle, it's um, you know, when you do this. So when do we do this kind of thing? Well, normally when we are um disgusted at things, or maybe when we are embarrassed as well. So when you were disgusted, it's like, <laughs> uh, like. I wouldn't do that. So yeah, disgusting. All right. Now, I want to know, in your cases, when do you use these situations? I know that uh, this one, the twirling your hair and wrinkling your nose is not that common. It's not something that we do a lot. But I feel like, you know, rolling your eyes, tapping your foot, or it's not only tapping your foot. It can also be like, for example, um, the swing of, of uh, your your knee which is something very common in us men that we we like um, cross our feet and then we start like, you know, swinging our knees when we are impatient. Um, el swinging our knees is como el, el mecer la, la, la rodilla, ¿verdad? Que hacemos muchos cuando estamos en, en una fila o algo así, o que empezamos a, a como jugar con, la, con las rodillas. Sí. Um, then, uh, what else? Yeah, biting your, your, your nails. When do you do that? So I want to hear from you. I want to hear in what situations do you use these gestures. So, Edwin, starting with you, when would you, for example, or have you ever beaten your nails? Have you ever done that? Um, El comerse las uñas, ¿alguna vez la he hecho? O, like, cuando lo hace? Hmm? When I, I feel um, nervous. Okay. And when, for example, when my team lose. Yeah, when I'm watching a game, like for example, for uh for the the final of the World Cup when Argentina, you know, was playing with France, I remember that I I needed more nails. I was like, ah, come on. So yeah, that's that's something that we experience a lot as as men. I feel like we experience that a lot, you know, with our teams. Like when we're watching a game, yeah. Um, how about in the case of, um, uh, Rodrigo, how about you, Rodrigo, uh, Mendoza, rolling your eyes. Do you ever do that? And when do you do that? Rolling your eyes. Um, for example, when I think in, 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 in other situation, uh, for example, when I imagine uh, or or dreams <laughs> dreams and mm -hmm. awake <laughs> for example okay. great and 
Okay, great. Yeah, I mean, uh, that sounds as a very positive way of rolling your eyes. Now, something that I think I forgot to mention is that this is a specific gesture. Rolling your eyes normally is seen as a negative thing. Like when, uh, or, or the idea that we have is that, you know, we are trying to like give the representation of a bad thing. Like rolling your eyes is like, ah, come on. Sí, el, 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 o sea, el girar los ojos normalmente en inglés, cuando decimos eso, el rolling your eyes, se entiende como algo negativo. Sí, sí es cierto que también se puede utilizar como algo positivo, ¿verdad? Como cuando estamos pensando, eh, como bien dice usted, en otra situación o en algo diferente o en una posible solución distinta o cuando me estoy imaginando algo diferente. So, yeah, those moments are, of course, rolling your eyes as well. Um, so, I'm going to leave it, you know, as that. So, yeah, we can use it in a positive way. But we can also use it in a ne negative way. Now, how about in the case of Rodrigo Hernandez? How about scratching your head, Rodrigo? Do you ever scratch your head? El rascarse la cabeza. Do you ever do that? And when do you do that? Uh, I think I'm scratching my head with a... Uh... I think uh, the reason what is a problem mm -hmm. is uh, I'm doing my work with a uh, mm -hmm. I think I, I, that means. Okay. Yeah, so that's probably like the most common moment when we tend to scratch our heads when we are facing a problem where when we do like we don't find a solution so it's like ah come on what should i do next like what can i try now so yeah scratching your hair now i think that i in my case i do it also when i'm like uh you know doing business I, there is one moment in my uh business that i get nervous about uh and it's when i have to tell the people how much it's gonna cost them you know the job that i just did for them like how much it's going to cost them. I get very, I am very bad at that. Like I, I would love it if like, you know, we lived in a communist country where you do something for someone and then they have to do something for you. It's not, it's not true, but I will feel more comfortable at least because there are times when I know that the things are expensive and I know that people may not have enough to pay. Uh, But what gets through my head when I do that is like, okay, they called me. They have enough money to have an AC. I don't. So, yeah, it's like, okay, you know, they have, they should have the money to pay for it. Um, So, yeah, but I am very bad at like giving the price to people, like telling them, okay, so this is going to be this much. It's going to be that much. Um, And yeah, but that, that's, you know, part of the thing that we have to do. So I scratch my hair sometimes. It's like, uh, they may think, oh, you know, it's like, uh, yeah, I just feel like I would like to, to charge less. Anyway, um, how about... In the case of, oh, Jonathan, you said that you were, you were going to be only a listener. Raul, in your case, Raul, when do you tap your foot? Have you ever do done that? And when do you do that? Mm, I consider that, for example, mm, when I when I am in the bank and the mm -hmm. bank is full, full, and I, and I am anxious and I... And I'm taping uh, my my food because I I am very impatient, okay. and and I and I don't like when when I go to the bank or the supermarket and the and it's full and I and I uh, begin to uh, begin taping uh, my food because I because. Uh, I I want to the the these uh, places is is uh, less uh, full. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, one word that we can use that I have noticed that most of you guys say it's full uh, is this word uh -huh. pat pat when it's pat. So it's a, it's not the most regular. Okay, but the idea is that uh, we are trying to be um like more creative when we say this word like it's packed you know it's it's that super lleno so yeah it's packed mm. so when the supermarket is packed because like yeah you can say full but um 
this one is a little bit more dramatic. Like it sounds, it sounds more, more in entertaining or more interesting when you say it like this, you know, oh, I went to the supermarket and instead of saying it was full, you can say it was packed. And that would mean that, you know, there was a lot of people in the line. And uh, yeah, another one that you can use is can you spell it? Uh, packed. Packed. Yeah, it's here. Oh, packed. Okay. Um, you can, can also say crowded. Yeah, I was about to say that. You can also say crowded. You know, it was, it was crowded. Uh, but crowded is normally used where when you go to things that you are uh, that is not how would it be like when it's like common, a concert, like uh, yeah, like a uh, like a reunion, you know, like a gathering of people. So you can say that it was crowded. Crowded is normally used in a positive way, like when you're happy that it was that there was a this amount of people. Like for example, you go to a concert. My experience, um, last month. I went to a concert that was from a uh, a singer that not many people know. Um, and his name is Siddhartha. Well, the band is called Siddhartha. So I went there and I wasn't honestly expecting it to be as crowded as it was. I, I thought that we were going to be only a few people there. But then when I saw the amount of people, I was like, okay, so it, it, it was actually crowded. So yeah, crowded es como de una forma positiva. ¿verdad? Yo le digo, oh, sí, como estaba lleno. O sea, genial que estaba lleno. So crowded, pero el packed es como para algo negativo, como, o sea, estaba llenísimo, es como que había demasiada gente, like uh, when you go to the supermarket or the bank, and of course, those are moments or situations when you don't want it to be, you know, as full. Y el hecho de decir full puede ser, pues, es la más fácil, la más común, pero no suena, digamos, como tan representativa de lo que podemos haber experimentado en ese momento. En ese momento puede que sentimos más esto, ¿verdad? Del, it was packed. Sí, o sea, estaba bien lleno. Okay, now, I think we're going to move on because I noticed that we only have a couple minutes left and I really want us to practice this conversation. So, it's relatively easy. It's titled, Have You Met Raj? And here we're going to be including three people. If you notice, we are going to be working in teams of three because we have Ron, Emily, and Peter. Peter simply says one line. So when we go to the breakout rooms, you know, try to switch that um, Peter person that, you know, you are different. Uh, you have different Peters on the breakout room because if we do only one um, person as Peter, that will not count as a practice. Now, so we have Ron, Emily, and Peter, and this is how the conversation is supposed to go. Have you met Raj, the new student from India? No, I haven't. Well, he seems really nice, but there's one thing I noticed. He moves his head from side to side when you talk to him. You know, like this. Maybe it means he doesn't understand you. No, I don't think so. Or it could mean he doesn't agree with you. Actually, people from India sometimes move their heads from side to side when they agree with you. Oh, so that's what it means. Okay, so there you have it. That's basically it. Uh, now, we're talking, of course, about gestures, right? Like some of the things that we do. And of course, the way in which we perceive gestures is not the same as people around the world are going to perceive gestures. So, for example, it says here, I don't know if it's true, but it says here that in India, people may like nod their head from side to side when they agree with you. And here, we do not their head, our heads from up and down when we agree. So it's not the same. So yeah, it will be like, you know, a different um, reaction. But in the end, it will mean basically the same thing, you know, that they do agree with you. Now, um, I think it's, cre it's clear. Or do you guys happen to have any questions regarding the words here in the conversation any word that you don't understand or you would like to clarify how to pronounce it i think it's very 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 easy right so please get your screenshots and we're going to move we moving into the breakout rooms and uh, we're going to go ahead and practice so we're going to have groups of four it's not going to be that crowded and uh, yeah so go ahead and do the practice the breakout rooms are open just about now.
center, right? Yes, in call center. Uh, I work from home. Okay, and which call center? In concentrics. Concentrics. Okay. Yes, but the, but the count is in Spanish. Ah, in Spanish. Yes. Okay. Because I work um at Sykes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sykes. Around three years. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you have the option to share the dialogue? Si no la podemos practicar. Sí, yo no pude. Ahora cuando estaba tomando la captura, me, se, me, se me quitó y ya no la pude. Sí. No sé si el teacher está acá. Veo como si estuviera conectado en el, en el salón. Y dígame, les comparto entonces la pantalla. No, por favor, porque no, 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 no. Ahorita. Ahí está. Confirme si lo logran ver. Ok, yes. Ok. Yes, coach. Great. Ok. Um, practice. Um, I be wrong. Who, who be I... Emily? Ok, ok. Ok, Peter. Peter. Ok. I I wrong. Um, okay. Have you met Raj, the student from India? No, I haven't. Uh, well, he seemed really nice, but there's one thing I noticed. He moves his head from side to say when you talk to him, you know, like this. Maybe it means he doesn't understand you uh, no i don't think so or it could mean he doesn't agree with you uh, actually no. yeah. actually people from india sometimes move their heads from side to side when they agree with you oh so that's What's it mean? Okay. Okay. Okay, I in this case I am I am wrong. Hi, yeah. Emily. Okay. okay, me Peter. Okay. How do you oh. meet Raj? The student from India? No, I haven't. Well, he seems really nice, but there's one thing I noticed. He moves his head from side to side when you talk to him, you know, like this. Maybe it means he doesn't understand you. No, I don't think so. Or it could mean he doesn't. Agree with you. Actually, people from India sometimes move their health from side to say when they agree with you. Oh, so that's what it means. Okay. Very good. Okay, I am Peter. Okay, go ahead. I am Emily. Have you met? Have you met? Have you met Rack, the student from India? No, I have. Well, 
he seemed really nice, but there's um, one thing I noticed. He moves his head from side to side. When you talk to him, you know, like this. Maybe it's mean, he doesn't understand you. No, I don't think so. Or it could mean he doesn't agree with you. Actually, people from India sometimes move their heads from side to side when they agree with you. Oh, so that's what it means. Okay. Finish. Okie dokie. So we have uh, done the practice and I gotta say once again, it felt great. It felt great, you know, to um to hear you guys practice in this conversation because yeah, I feel like, you know, with every practice that we have, we're doing an even better job. So uh it's great to like, you know, not stop practicing. Fact, like make the most out of the time that we have in the breakout rooms. I know that sometimes it might be like too repetitive, like some conversations are easy and short and we have to like do them, I don't know, three or um four times, but you know, the most that we practice, the better that we get. Now, we have here modal verbs and we're actually going to be talking about this more in depth tomorrow. But right now I want you to like have an idea on how we can go ahead and use modal verbs. So we already know, I think, models, like modal verbs are verbs that we can use in the same um, way for, um, you know, first person as we do for third person. There's no need for us to change the verbs um, when it comes to, um, to like referring to a third person. It is different, of course, when we talk about adverbs. Now, one difference that exists between the two is that um, verbs are, of course, going to be um located as the main verb in the sentence so it's going to be right after um the the subject adverbs on the other hand they can sometimes be placed at the beginning of the sentence like the case of maybe and perhaps and then there are other adverbs like possibly or probably or definitely that uh, are placed basically on on the on the same location as you will place a verb now, which is right after the subject. Uh, modal verbs, as I said previously, uh, if you notice here, you know, it says it might. So there's no need to say it might. Now, with uh, adverbs, as they are not verbs, it's the same. So we're basically keeping it the same way because it's not a verb. If it was a verb, we will have to change it. But some everything, of course, is going to be different when we get to the verb uh, that we have right after the modal verb. This verb mean, maybe it mean, or sorry, might mean, um, we have that it doesn't have an S right here at the end. So the verb keeps its original form. But when we use adverbs, when uh, we're using this subject, it, we have to change the verb and the verb has to go in its third person form, which means, of course, adding an S, an ES, or an IES, depending on the verb that we're using. So as I said, we're gonna talk more in depth about that tomorrow. It's simply for you guys to have an idea of what modal verbs we're gonna be referring to. And of course, the uh, strength of like the possibility that we're explaining depending on the modal verb that we're using. But uh, for now, basically that's it. That's all the information that we had to share. So all I gotta say is, Thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in this evening's class. Sure. Tomorrow, hopefully, oh, yes. Yes, Edwin? Oh, okay, okay. So hopefully Sorry. tomorrow, you know, there are no interruptions and we can have our uh, week as it was supposed to be, you know, finishing on Thursday. So yeah, thank you guys and see you tomorrow then. Bye. Tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Have a good evening.